Welcome to part one of designing in a modular way. In this lesson, we'll discuss how you can modularize your designs. Picture this, you've come up with a great user flow, put together mockups and prototypes to illustrate your interactions, and documented every single part. Chances are that your designs already follow a style guide, which could put you at a great advantage. If not, no worries, we'll be covering that in another course. Now step back and start mapping out at a high level the main parts of your design solution. These parts could be the interaction points where certain things are accomplished. For example, a checkout flow could look like this. But hold your guns, these aren't modules yet. To get there, we need to identify the UI elements that are persistent in the flow, such as the checkout steps indicator, form elements used to enter information, the representation of products in the cart, the representation of related products that others have bought, policies about the purchase, help text, and messages and alerts. Digging a little deeper, we will also find styles and interaction patterns. In the case of styles, you can observe the colors used to denote error, success, warning, and informational messages, primary versus secondary actions, inactive versus selected versus disabled states, links versus regular text, and branding. Typography used to display different types of content, such as font size for laying out information hierarchically, font types for highlighting messages or providing additional information, and lists to summarize information. Iconography used to convey visual meaning and quickly reference to common actions. Aside from styles, we can also observe interaction patterns. These differ from styles as their solutions to common design problems. For example, showing a help text that shows on demand is a common solution for answering questions while keeping the screen uncluttered. Other interaction patterns are showing upcoming steps disabled showing previous steps enabled so that the information can be edited, displaying summaries that can be edited, validating information once the user's clicked out of the field, providing help text on rollover, or updating the cart once a selection has been made. Once the design's been broken down into all these smaller pieces, we'll finally have our modules. At this point, it's easier to see that a lot of them apply not only to the checkout process, but to many other areas of the application. With a modular design approach, these modules can be created so that they're used in this particular design as well as in future ones. Up next, we'll learn about using atomic design and how it fits into the processes described in this lesson.